Well, fit like and folks, welcome back to the channel. This week we're taking one of these for a spin, the 2021 BMW 310GS. It's an Ickle GS. See you in a bit. Hope you enjoy. Down in the hood. Right then, folks, been caught off guard a little bit with this. My big beast is in for its 12,000 mile service, and they gave me this as a loan bike. I only have the head cam with me, but no other cameras, so it's going to be a bit of a back to basics. But you seem to enjoy that one last. So we'll do the sexy little walk around shots, TMF style, at the moment. There she is. What are we thinking? Do you know, it's not a bad looking bike at all genuinely there's a few different um, paint schemes that come you can see it's a single disc on the front four piston caliper though and the brakes they're not bad the rear is just a single disc single uh, piston caliper but you know does the job a uh, big old thumping exhaust there you can change that obviously if you want what else do we have there's really no sort of bells and whistles with this no cruise control no heated grips what do you think from behind Big old tank, I think it's an 11 litre tank, I'll correct that if I'm wrong But it does, allegedly, 75 miles to the gallon Now I topped it up yesterday when I picked it up, full tank, and it's hardly used anything So let's hit the road, and I'll tell you what I think Okay, so, are you ready for this? Are you ready for the roar? See on the dash, fairly basic dash, just a little um, digital dash there You've got your fuel gauge on the side, odometer, clock your revs are showing across the bottom here. It's got a gear selector, neutral light, everything like that. Uh, what else do you have? Standard sort of controls, really. No wonder wheel, obviously, on this one. But you've got your lights all on the left and your horn. And on the right is literally just the ignition. Mirrors, they look like the standard GS mirrors. But they're pretty garbage. You get a lot, I mean, you can probably see there's vibration on that already. And as soon as we start moving, you can't really use them. For a single cylinder engine, it's actually pretty smooth. Do you know, it's not bad at all for a little 310cc bike. It's got a fair amount of grunt in it, considering, as we all know, I'm a bit of a lump. Six foot three. 20 stone. I'll try and make sure that's the last time I tell you that in this vid, but I get asked all the time. What are the specs on this? Well, uh, I think it has 34 horsepower at round about the 9000 rev mark. It's a whopping 28 newton meters of torque at around about the five, five and a half thousand rev mark. So it's certainly not huge numbers, but I've been very surprised on the road how capable this is, you can overtake people left, right and centre really Especially once you keep the momentum going Typical small CC bike, it's like it at the R on the track You keep the speed up, the momentum up and this thing will go, it's lovely Certainly compared to most cars out there on the road You could put the overtakes in, no bother You need a little bit of planning though for sure Nationals! You see, in terms of power You know, there's enough to compete with the traffic, no problem you're certainly not, you're no Bugatti Veyron, no Tuono or R1, but you know, there's enough there, definitely, definitely enough. And bear in mind, this bike, it's A2 compliant. So any new riders out there, or any of you on restricted licenses, A2 licenses, this could be right up your Straza. Speaking of which, if it is up your Straza, how much are we talking? Well, this starts at just under five and a half grand. I think it's 5425 or something this will start at. Personally, I don't think that's bad at all. Five and a half grand for a brand new bike, which is more than capable and comes with a full BMW warranty. And I believe it even has BMW Assist, which if you're not aware, for three years you get BMW Assist, which is like breakdown recovery, but BMW style. They'll turn up in a lab coat with white gloves, silver cutlery in a tray, cup of tea, just to make sure you're all right. Well, it's not quite like that, but it, I've used it a few times and they've been fantastic. That in itself is worth getting a new Beamer for. But anyway, Back to the 310GS I like this bike Genuinely, I do like this bike 
it has the feeling of a small bike, because obviously it is. Speaking of which, I think it's about 170 odd, 175 kilograms wet, ready to ride on the road. Seat height, for those of you who ask, it ranges from, I think it's 820 to 850 millimeters, 820 with the low seat, 850 with the high seat option. I think standard is something like 830 or 835 millimeters. I can't imagine this bike is gonna be too high for many out there. Ergonomics wise, well me at six foot three sat on the bike. Uh, it's a little bit of a pull to get my uh, feet up onto the pegs, but once they're there, perfectly comfortable. The bars feel nice and wide. The seat is ample for my fat ass. My knees can grip into the side of the tank beautifully. I can work all the foot controls, no problem at all. I've got City Adventure boots on and I can still work the rear brake and the gear selector, no problem at all. Speaking of gear selector, there is no gear assist, no quick shifter or blipper with this. Good old fashioned, use the clutch and the foot lever. Speaking of clutch, the clutch and brakes, they're both fully adjustable. I think they have something like four different stages. So if you have particularly small or particularly large hands, you can adjust the reach of the levers to accommodate. What other toys have we got on this? No cruise control, no heated grips. Uh, LED lights, it's full LED lights. I don't think the indicators are LED, but the front and rear light, and I think actually the rear indicators, I think they're also LED. Actually, you know what? I think the front indicators are LED as well. You can get luggage for this, panniers and top box, if you're so inclined. I imagine someone somewhere would even do a screen, but to be honest, I don't feel the need for a screen at all on this bike. Even at sort of more away speeds, I haven't felt much in a way buffeting, buffeting at all. Right, I may as well show you motorway speeds. So this is me sat at sort of motorway speeds, realistic motorway speeds. There's a little bit of wind noise around my lid, but nothing drastic. And I can tell you across the top of my body, across my shoulders, it feels fine. However, look at these mirrors. I don't know if you can see anything out those mirrors but I can't the glass is vibrating so much I can't actually see anything pretty useless however the bike itself on the motorway it's fine you've got a little bit of extra oomph there to put in any overtakes should you need to but you've got to be realistic you're kind of almost at top whack I think top whack on this is round about 85-ish but anyway back to me on the other roads it handles lovely you will be scraping your toes left right and center on this bike feels lovely and balanced in the corners no problems flicking it for changing direction I'm genuinely impressed as I was saying before it's got that that wee bike feel but with just a little bit extra poke that makes it you know viable it makes it a contender on the roads in the sense of you know you're not going to find yourself losing out in an overtake like you do on the little 125 the terrain 380 that i tried it just left me feeling a little bit flat off-road it was very reassuring uh, so i suppose there's that this i don't know what this is like off-road actually but i'm heading down to Nathan's, Nathan Millward's, his Dorothy Speed Shop, I'm heading down there tomorrow. Yes, me off-road. But anyway, that's enough of you maniacs that like that stuff. Back to proper motorcycling on this solid tarmac stuff. <laughs> That'll stir the hornet's nest, won't it? What else can I tell you about this? Well, it's perfectly comfortable, performance-wise. It's perfectly adequate. It, it actually puts a smile on my face. I enjoy my time on this bike. I was going to say it's great for in the cities for filtering, but then I have no problem at all filtering on the big 1200s and 1250s. So, uh, you know, obviously this is going to be no issue. It's a cracking little bike, folks. If you're in the market for a wee bike, definitely check one of these out. So I am heading back to Chandler's in Brighton to pick up old Heidi. She's in for a 12,000 mile service which is all done and dusted, no issues whatsoever, 409 pounds. Now, some of you might be coughing up your tea there, but genuinely, I think that's pretty damn good because that is a valve clearance service, 12,000 mile now on the 1250s. 
Now I used to think with the 1200s, I'm sure it was 18,000 miles. But anyway, either way, the last time I had the 1200 done for a valve clearance, it was about 650 odd quid. So the 1250 for its first valve clearance, 409 pounds, Chandler's. Happy days. So it's a bit of a trek for me, it's about a two hour trip each way down there, but the service has been great. So what I've seen so far, I'd totally recommend them. Obviously, unless I pick my bike up and it's full of scratches or the wheels fall off as soon as I ride away, then obviously I'd maybe have something to say about the service. But at the moment, it's been top notch. I couldn't use my usual one over at Arden's because they couldn't fit me in until November. So I had a little phone around and I managed to get myself booked in with Chandler's because I'm off to Devon down to Dathan's tomorrow and then in, uh, I'm off to Wales next week to do the last bit of filming for the TV show and then I'm off to Switzerland on a road trip at the end of the month cannot wait for that so the old tractor, they did a clean bill of health before we embarked on those trips plenty of power, plenty for the road, it's fine Alright folks, make sure you check out the next vid, wherever it is, up there or there. A big thanks to Chandler's for the loan of this bike. Keep doing your thing, look after those that you love, get on out there whenever you can, and live your life. Woo-ha! Yeah! <laughs>